Let's go. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, my name's Alexa Ray, and welcome to another video. I'm so glad you're here, and I'm so glad you clicked on today's video. You guys already know what we're doing. We are doing one of my favorite types of videos to film on my channel. We are going to be attempting to read for 24 hours. I used to do these videos like all the time on my channel. Eventually, I just got super burnt out. I remember at one point I was even trying to do like reading for 48 hours and I literally felt deceased by the end of it. I try to space these out when I do them now. I think the last one I did on my channel was about a month ago and we read so many books in that video. I think I actually wound up reading like six or seven books, which is so crazy for me. Usually in 24 hours, I can read on average four, maybe five books, depending Depending on the length but in that video I just like I really went off it was really fun so here we are again I have some very exciting books picked out for today's video we're actually gonna be starting off with things we never got over by Lucy score about like halfway through this I've kind of been taking my time with this book we need to wrap it up so I can move on to the next one so although your girl is a night owl I always crash once I hit like 2 a.m. I think what we're gonna do though is start the timer and see what happens we're gonna see where the the night takes us. Worst case scenario, I fall asleep and we pick this back up tomorrow. It happens all the time. I think I've read for 24 hours straight successfully like once or twice on my channel and I was like a zombie at the end of it. So we're gonna see how this goes. That is what we are doing in today's video. I'm going to stop rambling on and on about it and we're gonna hop right into it. First things first, coffee. <laughs> I am always getting asked what I'm drinking in the beginning of my videos when I'm reading. I am usually always drinking coffee, especially when I'm reading because I get sleepy when I read. And since we are doing a 24 hour readathon today, I figured we're gonna need all the coffee we can get. So I thought we'd have a little fun and I'd show you guys how I actually make my coffee. So you're gonna start off with your glass of choice and then the coffee I'm gonna be using today is Early Bird Coffee, which happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Early Bird specializes in coffee concentrates that are made up of 100% Arabica beans that are sourced from Latin America and Africa. This creates the yummy smooth flavor we love in coffee. So first things first, I'm going to go in and add some almond milk and some ice cubes. I kind of eye it when I do it to be completely honest, but I think I add around like a cup of milk. All early bird batches of coffee are also third party lab tested to ensure they are pure and free of any potential contaminants left over from the farming process. This is where the fun really starts to happen though. They sent me this cutie little spoon to help out when it comes to measuring my coffee and this is a coffee concentrate so this stuff is strong we're only going to add two teaspoons to start off the craziest thing about early bird too is that one bottle is 24 servings now I'm just gonna add some creamer I'm using a cookies and cream one Then we're gonna mix it up and of course we can't forget to add a cutie little straw with Early Bird, the more you buy, the more you save. So let's say you buy two bottles at $25 each, you'll receive one bottle free. Technically, for $50, you'll receive 72 servings. And since shipping is free on all orders over $30, that comes out to roughly 70 cents a serving. Even after adding creamers, flavors, stuff like that, the cost of the drink will still be a fraction of what coffee shops are charging. You can use my link down below, and when you buy one bottle, you get your second one half off. Or if you buy two bottles, Models, you'll get your third one for free. With every order, you also get a custom note from Early Bird welcoming you to their nest, which I thought was so, so sweet. Okay, let's do a taste test. Like, I haven't been drinking this every day for the past month. It's so good. I also love how sustainable Early Bird is. They only use glass bottles to reduce single-use coffee cups and pods. If you guys are coffee lovers like myself and you're interested in trying out Early Bird, you can use my link down below and when you buy one bottle, you get your second one half off. Or if you buy two bottles, you'll get your third one for free. All orders also come with their cutie little measuring spoon to help you out every morning when you're making your coffee. Now that we have our coffee all made, we're gonna hop right into the reading vlog. 
The first book we are going to be hopping into is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This is actually my first ever Lucy Score book, which I feel like is so crazy. I feel like she is such a popular author that so many people always talk about, rave about. I'm already like halfway through this book. I've kind of been tackling it through the month of June, which is like a really long time for me to be reading a book, to be completely honest. I'm on chapter 25. This is a dual point of view between the two main characters, Naomi and Knox. Naomi is like this runaway bride, basically, and she she runs away to the small town of Nakmut. I don't know. I think that's how you say it. She has a twin sister named Tina who is definitely like the troublemaker out of the two of them. She gets into a lot of trouble. She causes a lot of trouble and problems for Naomi being her twin. And basically Naomi runs to her sister Tina's aid and when she gets there she finds that Tina has taken off on her latest, her latest adventure I guess you could say. But she left behind her daughter so Naomi is now left with her niece Waylay who she had no idea about in the first place so is very much a shock to her so Naomi is now staying in this little town she's now taking care of her niece Waylay who she just recently discovered she is staying in a cute little cottage next door to this grumpy barber slash bar owner named Knox and as soon as Naomi catches his eye he immediately starts like taking care of her and doing sweet little things for her helping her and way layout he like basically just does these really nice things for Naomi in the grumpiest way possible of course because we've got a grumpy meets sunshine trope in here yeah we are kind of just watching Naomi figure out and navigate this new lifestyle that she's taken on she is a runaway bride so she's also dealing with baggage that she left back home which is really interesting it's like basically what this whole story has been about so far the main plot or like conflict in all of this I would say is like where's Tina and when is she coming back? Is she going to ruin this new dynamic, new lifestyle that Naomi has created for Waylay? That's kind of where I'm at right now with this. I have to say, like, in the beginning, I really, really liked this book. It immediately jumps into the story. There's no really slowness to it. We're just immediately thrown into, like, bam, Naomi is running away from her wedding, finds out she has a niece and all this stuff, so I really liked that. I do have some cutie blue pens and highlighters, and then I think I'm gonna use these blue tabs because I feel like they match almost perfectly with the cover. We're also getting glimpses into the characters we see in book two and in book three, which is coming out later this year. And I have to say I'm really, really excited for book three, which also the found family trope in this is like, I love the found family in this. We are gonna start the timer and hop into this. I'm also gonna go through and like do some quick annotations that I missed. I feel like we're going to hit like the big, what is it? Climax of the story, I feel like. Like something's going to happen. Like I just can feel it in my bones. Knox, he's grumpy to the point where he's kind of just mean, I guess you could say. He has like this soft spot for Naomi that I absolutely love and he just keeps doing like all these little things for her. He calls her like Daisy because when they first met she had daisies in her hair. They're so stinking cute together and this last chapter was kind of crazy. 
but basically we like see someone from Naomi's past pop up. Knox is like kind of there to her rescue to defend her. It like made my heart so happy seeing how Knox stood up for Naomi. They're just so sweet and like wholesome. They both like clearly have feelings for each other, but there's also like a fake dating trope in here. So we're kind of seeing them navigate that and they're trying to act like they don't have feelings for each other. I just know that we're getting to a point in the story where something is going to go wrong and I just don't know what it's going to be. Naomi and Knox are kind of annoying in this because they're both like second guessing their feelings for one another and each other's feelings and like you know Naomi's like oh like Knox couldn't possibly want to be with me. And Knox is the same way with Naomi so we're kind of seeing them second guess each other and themselves and I just wonder if like that's going to be the turn of events in this story and I kind of hate when that happens in books and it happens so often so I feel like that's what's going to happen in this and like I hate it so so much because like everything's so sweet right now and perfect you know when everything is perfect in a story you know it's going to blow up so I'm also falling madly in love with like all the side characters in this story and it makes me so excited for book two I'm really loving this like all the happy vibes and butterflies are coming out of this story right now and these characters are making me so happy but they're gonna mess it up I just know they're gonna mess it up so we're gonna keep going see what happens I'm literally so nervous I don't even know what to say right now except for I am crushed and I'm frustrated like I know how this is going to end like I feel like I have like a pretty good guess at how this story is going to end but I'm annoyed that we have to get over this like bump in the road first I honestly think it's because this book is so thick and I think that's why I'm getting like more frustrated than I normally would with like a book and like when something crazy happens because like I've been reading this for what feels like forever and now like everything was so perfect and then it just like crumbled and I'm so upset about it. By the way, it only took like four chapters since the last time we talked for the story to like go down the hole. So I love this story as like annoying and frustrating as it may be. I'm still like genuinely enjoying this and I can't wait to see what happens. But like this part in the book is like making me so frustrated because like everything was perfect and now it's not. We're gonna keep going. I'm on chapter 39. It's called Breaking Up Down and Through. Too complicated, too much, too needy, not worth it is how it starts. That's also probably another the reason why I'm super frustrated right now because I'm not like crushing on Knox hardcore like I usually do when I read romance books. I'm like, Ugh, of course, of course this is happening. I'm gonna stop rambling. We are gonna keep going. I literally have this itty bitty chunk left. How does the perfect story crumble in just this little bit? We're gonna keep going and see what happens. It's the next day as I'm I'm sure you guys I'm sure you guys could tell it's not the same day as the last clip basically I don't even know what really happened like in the previous clips, I know we were like wrapping up things we never got over. Did finish reading the book that night, but I think I like fell asleep and I just didn't film my review or anything. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna talk all about things we never got over by Lucy Score. I think it just got to like a point in the night where I was getting super, super tired, where I couldn't keep my eyes open. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to sleep and I'll start the next book the next day. I feel like it's better that way so that I'm not starting a brand new book with like a sleepy mind because then I'm most likely not gonna remember what I'm reading and I'm probably not gonna enjoy it as much because I'm so tired. So I decided to call it quits for the night once I wrapped this one up. We're gonna continue on our reading vlog adventure today, but really quick, I just wanted to talk about things that we never got over by Lucy Score. This was my first ever Lucy Score book and I am very, very very impressed with how it went. I was very nervous going into it, not in the sense that it would be good or not, but like this is a really chunky book and chunky books do intimidate me. This took me about a week to finish I want to say because I started reading this before I even started this video so in this video though we covered like the last half of it also this half literally took me like six hours I think we're at the six hour and like 20 minute mark I loved Knox and Naomi's story I love the grumpy meets sunshine trope there's a fake dating trope in here it was a really fun cute small town read I'm really big on the small town trope especially in the summertime they just make me feel really happy they make me feel cozy inside. We got to meet Nash who is Knox's brother which book two is about. We also met Lucian who book three is all about which I cannot wait for book three because Lucian and Sloane's story 
I already know it's gonna be like my favorite one out of this whole series. We have a little bit of a single parent trope in here as well, which I actually really enjoyed. I don't read a lot of books like that often, but when I do, I find that I do really enjoy that trope. Throughout this entire story, Knox is like very grumpy, but he also is always going out of his way to take care of Naomi and Waylay, and he's always there for them. It's very sweet. I really enjoyed watching Knox and Naomi's relationship develop, and as I'm sure you can tell by like the length of this, we get a lot of really cute moments between the two of them. We get to see a lot of character development in here. There's also like this sense of mystery throughout the story. Tina is literally MIA and Naomi is trying to figure out where her sister is because she literally left her daughter with her. The very last bit of this book was very crazy. It's not exactly what I thought was going to happen, but I kind of predicted little parts of it that did happen. But overall, I really, really enjoyed it. I've been really torn about like the rating of this book. I don't think it's a five star. I think it's more of like four, 4.5 star. I did really enjoy this. I really loved getting to know the other characters in this book. I'm super excited to move on to book two. So I think I'm going to put it at like 4.5 stars. The only thing I would say about this is that I do think it's pretty chunky and I feel like it's not like necessary. I'm so excited because the next book I picked out is a book that is like, is like one of my most anticipated reads for this year and it just came out a month ago. It's another small town trope and it's the fourth book in my favorite favorite book series right now. Next up we're going to be reading Reckless by Elsie Silver. This is book four in the Chestnut Spring series and tells the story of Theo and Winter. Winter is the older sister to Summer who we meet in book one. Theo is like a professional bull rider but he's actually the prodigy of Rhett who we also meet in book one. Winter is a very closed off and cold type of person because of the way she grew up. She grew up in a very like toxic household and she's just very reserved and closed off because she doesn't really trust a lot of people. In this book, we get to see Theo kind of crack at Winter's walls. Also, a secret baby romance, which I thought was really interesting. I don't think I've ever read like anything like that. I'm very intrigued. I'm very excited about it. I'm on chapter three now. I've read two chapters this morning already, and I've already started annotating because like I'm already loving it. It was super hard to put this down. I left off on the six hour and like 20 minute mark. So we're gonna start the timer up again and see how far we can get. This looks like it's on the chunkier side, but I have literally flown through like this entire series. I read these books so fast, literally obsessed with this whole world. So I don't know how long it's gonna take, but we're gonna find out. We're gonna jump right into Reckless and read all about Theo and Winter. I am so, so excited. In my world, I don't worry, darling. I just smile, cause you're by my side. And now your eyes open up every morning to the love that shines in mine. And I see it in yours too. So now I sing to you. And when you go, Leave me here all alone I'll be waiting We can make it Because I know That after all this time You'll read between these lines I just got to chapter 8, page 97. This is not how I like expect expected this story to go to be completely honest. I'm living for Theo and Winter right now. So in chapter 8 we actually have a time jump which I wasn't expecting. I don't I don't know what I was expecting going into this. Like I said I've never read like a secret baby romance trope before so it's totally new for me. But this is like crazy like what's happening right now. I don't know what to think. All I know is like so far Theo is the cutest person ever. He honestly may be my favorite guy in the Chestnut Spring series right now, and I'm only on chapter eight. I just love how like sweet and genuine he is, and he gives off Golden Retriever vibes, and I just love everything about his character right now. Chapter seven like ended on a really, really weird note. I already know it's not, I don't know how to explain it without like giving you spoilers, because I don't want to spoil this. I just know the end of chapter seven isn't real. Like I know what happened at the end of the chapter isn't really what happened. 
I'm not making any sense, I know. But basically I just know, like it's fake. What I just read is totally fake because there's no way that could happen in this story, especially coming from Theo. I'm still really loving this. I'm so excited to see how this goes because I have so many theories about Winter and Theo and how they're gonna get together and stuff like that. I also was highlighting the heck out of these last few pages because they were so cute. So far, I'm loving this. It's giving off all the small town happy vibes. This series is just like such a feel good series. Like it just makes me happy whenever I read these books. We're gonna keep going though. I don't have too much to report on since we've only read seven chapters. I feel like my heart is just broke into a million pieces. It's a little bit later and I'm actually about to take a break and head out to the gym because I was just starting to feel icky, I guess you could say, just sitting around all day and it's been super warm in my apartment. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna get out, we're gonna go to the gym. I wanted to talk to you guys really quick about where we're at. I'm on page 253, chapter 22. We're like a little bit more than halfway through the book. I'm flying through this like I knew I would because I just love it so, so much. This this book is just everything I hoped for honestly and everything that I thought it would be plus more and I'm just loving Winter and Theo's relationship so so much. Theo is definitely one of my favorite boys out of the Chestnut Springs series. He is just so stinking sweet. He's almost like too sweet. I don't know everything he does is just so perfect and he's so supportive of Winter and he's always there to help her out. This is gonna sound so bad and I don't mean it to but I'm just kind of waiting for Theo to break. His character is so perfect in this story and he's just always present for Winter and Vivi and everyone else around him that he's never really present for himself and I feel like he almost doesn't take care of himself if that makes sense. I have to say like the secret baby trope in this it's not like what I expected for a secret baby trope like I don't know what I thought was gonna happen and I have to say I'm happy it wasn't anything that I thought it was going to be because I really really like how this is going. I really like watching Winter be like the best mom that she can be to Vivi. I love watching watching Theo become the best dad ever. Yeah, this is just, this is so, so cute. It's so different, I feel like, from the first three books in the series. This is just such a different vibe. Like, I can't even explain it. I think it's really cool to see Winter's character development so far throughout this because in the first three books, she's kind of painted as like the villain and like this horrible person. In this book, we really get to dive in to who Winter is. And we also get to see like her side of the story because in the first three books, we only see Summer side. Also, this is such a cute cover. I love that we have like the cowboy boo and then the little baby boo. I just think that's so stinking cute. We're a little bit more than halfway through. I'm gonna go to the gym and when we get back, we're probably gonna wrap this up. I can't stop thinking about this book. I have to finish it tonight. It's a little bit later. I got home from the gym probably like three or four hours ago. We finished up. Reckless. I am unwell. It was just a very simple small town romance. It was a secret baby romance and I love every single part of it. I think what makes this so special is Winter's character development throughout the entire series has been absolutely insane. We get a glimpse into Winter in book one. All we really know is that she's Summer's older sister and she's a doctor. She's very cold and she seems heartless and almost plays like the villain. The villain I guess you could say in the story. You get to reckless and you get to read all about her and you get to see her side of the story and it's like 
chef's kiss it's so it's so good i loved this so much this is five stars a gazillion stars infinity stars this makes me so happy and i've just been processing it for the last 30 minutes this is absolutely incredible i love this entire series i am so so excited for hopeless to come out it's supposed to come out later this year but i don't actually know if it's going to be out at the end of the year because i haven't really seen elsie silver herself say too much about it fingers crossed because that's supposed to be Bo's story i love winter and theo's story I think Winter was such a cool and different character compared to the first three girls we meet in the first three books. Theo was like incredible, the like perfect, perfect person. He's definitely like my favorite Chestnut Springs guy right now. The secret baby trope was really cool. That was very different. It was my first one and I really enjoyed it, but it was really, really cute and I loved it. I love like Elsie Silver's writing. Her writing style is so cool and it's honestly so fast paced. This book is on the chunkier side, but I literally flew through it. I flew through all of her books, honestly. I never once got bored. I never once wanted to like put the story down or anything like that. I was actually going to like stop filming for the night because I was feeling really tired. Ever since I got home from the gym, I have just been like absolutely exhausted. All of a sudden, I feel like I got like a second win. I don't, I don't know what happened. The next book we are going to be jumping into, I am so excited for this one because it's a book. It's a pretty popular book. It's honestly like a book talk book. If you will. It's a very, very popular book that I feel like everyone and their mother has probably read and I haven't read it because it's by an author I'm very like iffy on. The time has come. I know, I know, I know. The time has come for us to start Be Treated by Emily Henry. I read People We Meet on Vacation last year by her and I, if you've watched my videos before, even if you've watched one video before, you've probably heard me talk very poorly about People We Meet on Vacation. People We Meet on Vacation just like was it it for me? It was super slow and bland and boring and I just wasn't vibing with it. I honestly was like this close to DNFing that book. I pushed through and I read it. I didn't like it. Last month I decided to pick up her newest book which is Happy Place because so many people were raving about it saying it was amazing. It's the perfect summary. I caved. I bought the book. I read it. I absolutely loved it. That book opened me up to giving her other books another try. So many people love Gus and January's story. I didn't actually know this until recently but Gus and January are actually like authors. They basically make a pact to spend the summer writing and they challenge each other to write something different and new that they haven't written before and pretend we're reading this on the beach and hope that the vibes are immaculate. That's all I have for you guys. We are gonna hop right into Beach Read and fingers crossed it goes well. Something about you supernatural I get goosebumps every time you call Got me running through my fantasies 40 West, I'm doing 93 Tell me where the sparks come from Don't know, do we both bring some? Doing something that I can't explain I have just done the worst thing. One of the cringiest things when it comes to reading for me is I don't like cracking spines. Like I don't like the cracking of a book spine. For some reason, it really bothers me. I folded it and I heard it. I heard it crack and I was like, look at this. Anyways, I'm on chapter 14. I have like mixed feelings about this right now. When I started it, it was a little like slow. It also kind of starts off in a really heavy way. That may have also been why I was like immediately interested in it because I'm like, okay, this is getting me emotional right now. I have to keep reading to see what happens. They are both authors who are experiencing basically like a writing block. Like they're having trouble writing their next book. Gus basically writes like literary fiction and he does not necessarily believe in happy endings whereas January strictly writes romance so she always has like happy endings in her books so when they finally meet start talking getting to know each other they decide to come up with this pact where they both are going to push each other to finish a book by the end of summer January basically challenges Gus to write a book with a happy ending and then he challenges January to write what he usually writes it's really fun I really 
love the idea of this so far. January is taking Gus on fun adventures that are like a rom-com worthy so he can get ideas for his story. Gus is taking her to interviews and stuff like that that will help her write her book. So it's been really fun so far. They're just going on all these like little adventures I guess you could say together. Chapter 12 is probably one of my favorite chapters at the moment because we just see like such a sweet little moment between the two of them and gives you like those happy butterflies you get when you're super young like when you're in high school and you're on like a first date or something that's like how they're feeling in this chapter that's like the vibes they're giving off and it makes me so so happy they're just being so sweet and cute together there's also like a little side story with january's life that is really interesting to me i'm almost three hours in so <laughs> i don't know i feel like i'm reading really slow and this is also really bothering me we're gonna keep going and see what happens things are definitely Definitely heating up in this book. I did not expect it, nor did I see it coming. I'm on chapter 19. It's called The Beach. Chapter 18, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot happened between January and Gus. I guess like I kind of saw it coming, but like not exactly how it played out. Gus is, he's definitely making moves. I just want to do a little halfway check with you guys. We've just kind of been watching Gus and January grow closer and closer, going on these fun little adventures, adventures. They're basically dates, but no one's gonna say it. No one's gonna say it, but they're basically dates. It's honestly so wholesome. Like, I love that this is about two authors. I think that's so, so sweet. We've also been getting a little bit of insight into January's side story with her parents, her dad, stuff like that. So that's been really interesting. I feel like it's so weird. But I'm almost more interested. I'm almost more interested in January's like side story with her parents. I feel like this isn't like a spoiler, but she basically finds out that her dad has this crazy, crazy secret. It kind of leads her to staying at this beach house for the summer, it leads to all these other things that happen. But I'm so curious to know more about like the whole secret that her dad kept and just like all the crazy stuff because it's just, it's quite wild. It's not like calling to me though. The way that Reckless was, I was so consumed by that book and with this one I'm just kind of like just reading it for funsies so it's very cute though and I do really like January and Gus's like dynamic they have going on I like watching their characters develop and grow closer I think it's really really cute I have about 200 pages left we're gonna see how far we can get if we can finish it tonight Just wrapped up Be Treated by Emily Henry and I'm literally about to fall asleep. I'm so, so tired. <laughs> the ending of this book, I, I did not see it coming. One eternity later. I definitely understand the hype about them and about this story because their relationship throughout the entire story is just so, so sweet. I was like swooning over the two of them throughout the whole story. And towards the end, I was a little nervous because I didn't know exactly how things were going to end up. I'm really happy with how it ended. I think it was really, really sweet. I'm very torn because I liked it, but it's definitely not at like the top of like my reading like it's not like a top tier book for me like it is for so many people I think I'm gonna give it 3.5 I did really enjoy it I think Gus and January were absolutely adorable I loved the whole little side plot of January's dad let me know down below if you are a big Emily Henry fan and what your favorite book by her is with that being said I think we're gonna call it a night get our beauty rest so we can start our next read tomorrow morning and really dive into it I think we're gonna read another summer read because I'm just like in the mood for summer reads. We've also been reading for a total of 20 hours and 4 minutes. I usually can beat that 24 hour mark, but this time around, I don't think I'm going to. Anyways, we're gonna head to bed, get some sleep. I'll see you guys in the morning. Let's go! It's 
the next day as i'm sure you guys can tell basically what i did all day today is i woke up early in the morning and i started the summer of broken rules by kl walder i've actually hit this book since last summer i never got around to it i think it's because i'm very much a mood reader and sometimes i want to read like cozy fall books in the middle of summer so i started the summer of broken rules early this a.m kind of just stayed in bed and we read all day we definitely passed the 24 hour mark 25 hours and 32 minutes was our final time this is supposed to be like a cutie little ya summer read it tells the story of this girl named meredith and basically her and her family are spending a week in martha's vineyard for a family wedding i think it was like a year prior to the wedding meredith lost her sister claire in i think a car accident so throughout this story we're kind of watching meredith get through the loss of her sister and grieve with her family. It's definitely on like the emotional side of read. They have this family tradition where they play a game of assassin, which I thought was so fun. I guess it was like Claire's all time favorite game. In Claire's honor, Meredith vows to win the game of assassin. Everything is going smoothly until Meredith decides to partner up with a groomsman. They start kind of falling for one another and getting really close and she starts to get nervous because she thinks she may be risking winning the game because of this cute groomsman. It gives off all of the summery vibes, takes place in Martha's Vineyard. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a super cute YA summery read, if you're looking for like non-spicy romance. I think I'm gonna give this three stars. Again, it was very cute. It's the perfect YA summer romance if that's what you're looking for. But I just like was kind of bored. Like this wasn't romancing the way I was hoping it would. I feel like there wasn't as much romance in this as I was hoping for. But nonetheless, it was really sweet. I think it's a really good story. But that brings us to the end of this reading vlog. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. This is definitely on the slower side. I don't know what happened in this reading vlog, but it was definitely on the slower side for me. We did finish four books, but not within 24 hours. We finished it within 25 and a half hours. So I feel like I read Beach Read so incredibly slow. I don't know what it is about Emily Henry books, but it takes me so long to read her books. For the most part, we read some really good books in today's vlog. My favorite one for sure, Reckless by Elsie Silver. That is definitely like the top tier book that came out of this reading vlog. I loved that book so, so much. Theo in Winter. They have my heart. I love them so, so much and I'm so excited for Hopeless. I cannot wait for Bo's story. Make sure to comment down below if you are an Emily Henry fan and if you are, what is your favorite Emily Henry book? Because I'm still very, very iffy on her. I really enjoyed Happy Place last month and I thought it was so sweet. And I did enjoy Beach Read, but not as much as I was like hoping to. It like drives me crazy because so many people love her books and for some reason I like can't get into them. Also, comment down below what type of videos you guys would like to see from me because I feel like I've just been doing 24 hour readathons over and over again and although I love doing those types of videos I also want to film and create videos that you guys also really enjoy so comment down below what you guys would like to see but that is all I have for you guys today I love you so so much and I'll see you in my next video mm -hmm.